back at the science cave and uh, in this video we're going to look at some uh, converging boundaries and this one or the first we're going to look at is a subduction and let me get my uh, pen here and let's see and let's see we got a subduction oops subduction and this one happens to be ocean ocean oops our ocean continental and I'm just going to abbreviate ocean continental well in this particular one we have an ocean plate right here this would be our ocean plate right here subducting or going underneath the continental plate again remember the ocean plate forms way out here at a ridge and as we learned before the farther you get away from the ridge the older uh, the plate gets or the crust we should say the older the crust gets and uh, the denser it becomes and this is basalt and most of the continental crust is going to be granite as we've talked about before well this basalt has greater density so when it meet, meets the uh, continental crust it's going to subduct or dive underneath and as it dives underneath as you go deeper into the uh, the earth's crust you start getting down to the xenosphere and as you can see here the solid where it's solid up here it's going to start to melt and it's starting to melt down here and when it melts into the mantle again it is less dense so it'll work its way up looking for cracks in the uh, continental crust and when it does find these and you can see this magma rising through here it's going to break through and form volcanoes and right along in here you're going to get some shallow earthquakes and then down here you're going to get some uh, deeper earthquakes once all the crust melts or it all melts you're not going to get any earthquakes at all because the, the subduction crust has melted and uh, this is a, a good example of this is the Nazca plate off the uh, west coast of uh, South America and then with the South American plate so this would be the South American, this would be the Nazca, and this would be in the over you know, Pacific Ocean here, and this, this would be a great example of the Andes Mountains here. So the key thing to remember here is it's on a subduction boundary, it's always the one with the greater density. And when you have a subduction ocean continental, this basalt has greater density, it's old and so it's going to subduct underneath the uh, continental crust and as it melts it rises up the next one we want to look at let's see if I can get this one going here is ocean ocean get a different color pen here so we got a subduction and this is ocean ocean Well, this one's kind of unique, and you might ask, well, if it's ocean, ocean, how do you know which one is going to subduct? Because, you know, they're both oceanic, they're both basalt. The one that subducts is the one that traveled the farthest from a ridge. And so uh, this one right here has greater density. The other thing to remember this one here that does not subduct typically it's going to be fairly close to some uh, some land and uh, the closer you are to land this is going to be close 
We're just going to put down closer, closer to land. It's not going to be as dense. You got to remember, if this is way out here in a ridge where crust is being formed, you know, like the mid Pacific rise or what have you, uh, as it moves across, it becomes cooler, it becomes denser and older. And this, the great example here. Oh, and you get off the whole, uh, get into the uh, west side, the uh, the Pacific. And these are all these islands in here, the Japanese islands, and uh, all down there in Malaysia, and uh, all those islands uh, as you get near the west side of the Pacific. This oceanic crust of the Pacific has traveled a long ways, so therefore it has greater density. It's older, colder, has greater density. This side not too far off here you have the continent here so what you're gonna find this is not gonna be quite as dense and again the denser material is going to subduct now one thing people always ask oh, well what side are you gonna find the volcanoes because again we've got some volcanoes going on here and this would be this right here would form a volcanic island arc and let's see volcanoes the volcanoes are always formed on the non subducting plate or this volcanic islands volcanoes we'll put on islands here also these uh, volcanic island arcs are always formed on the non subducting plate or the plate that's closest to a continent. And that's one way to always remember that. The, the plate that's traveling the farthest, uh, you know, again, we have basalt here. It has that greater density. And so it's the one that's going to sink. As it sinks, the magma melts and it works its way up through here. And you get these volcanoes. And these are all these uh, volcanic islands in the West Pacific. Uh, quite a few of them were made famous during, uh, during World War II. But that's always a good way to tell what side, you know, when you have an ocean-ocean subduction boundary, the volcanic island arcs are always going to be on the side opposite the, the part of the oceanic crust that's the farthest from the ridge or they're going to be formed on the oceanic crust that's closest to the landmass or to the continent. And uh, don't be afraid to check some other pictures of these out. We'll look at some uh, definitely when we're working on our Google Earth. The last type we want to talk about is a continent, is a collision or continent, continent. Continent continent uh, this type of uh, uh, converging boundary here uh, the best example would be the Himalayan mountains here you'd have the uh, the Indian plate Indian plate and up here you have the Eurasian. The Indian plate has greater density, so it is subducting underneath the Eurasian plate. Now, again, you gotta remember the Indian plate, you would have the ocean here. So it would have greater density because you know you're looking at some basalt. And really what ended up happening through the whole idea of plate tectonics, this Indian plate is smashing up into the Eurasian plate. And these are folded mountains. You don't see any magma really getting formed here because we, what we have here is mostly con well, continental here and continental here. So what we're having is when these two gigantic land masses meet you have this folding of the land so we have folded we have folded mountains 
and the Himalayans are a good example of this. I guess I should put this up here. Himalayans. Uh, we're going to look at the Himalayans, uh, especially as we get into through some Google Earth. But what you're going to notice here is is the lack of volcanoes. You don't have any magma that can work its way up. And so what we have again to recap is the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate get shoving into one another. The Eurasian plate is less dense, so it's forced up. The Indian plate is the one that is subducting. And all this land mass is just getting crumpled. And this is what is considered folded mountains. Uh, we'll be looking at some of this other, uh, these things when we, uh, as we work through our Google Earth. So that's it for this one. And uh, we'll catch you a little bit later.